Parcels is basically a GMP compliant lab and uh, we produce different kind of cell lines um, from human body uh, to be used for treatment of various life threatening and lifestyle diseases. Uh, these are used by our partner hospitals and partner doctors. So we essentially manufacture these cells, uh, various kind of cells and these are used by doctors and hospitals to do the treatments. But at the same time, we also write the protocols on how treatments are to be done. We train the doctors and uh, uh, that's how we you know, do the entire spectrum of what we call regenerative medicine. Stem cell therapies are regularly called the future of modern medicine. So maybe in the next five years, 10 years, we can't really put a timeline to it, but uh, in, in, in foreseeable future, it will probably replace a lot of surgeries, a lot of medicines, a lot of ways in which we are treating a disease currently. So uh, if you look at it globally, this is the most exciting thing in the medical field. It's the most researched and most published thing in the medical world. So it has the potential to completely change the way diseases are treated today. So the scope is immense. I mean, uh, the healthcare marketing spent over the last few years has been $8 trillion. So I say that's the market we are going after. Uh, one is, as I said, acceptance from the medical community. Uh, that is slow, that is uh, not as fast as we would have liked. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's difficult to make a doctor, uh, to tell a doctor, please forget whatever you have learned and just try to convert to a new branch. And they, they, are, they are right at their part. I mean, we still have to prove ourselves before they wholeheartedly start uh, accepting it. But uh, yeah, somehow uh, 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 the acceptance is a little less than what we would have liked. Uh, government regulations is again a challenge. Uh, we have to work in very strict regulations, which is again uh, fair. Uh, healthcare is an overly regulated space and needs to be. So uh, time, time to time we do work with the government, we, we try and put our case in, they are receptive to the ideas. Uh, the third major challenge we always face is funding. Uh, it's not easy for a healthcare research company to approach a VC and unlike an IT company, we cannot raise billion dollars in a day. Uh, primarily because uh, you know, putting money in healthcare research is a gamble. Uh, the gestation period is very long, you might have to wait 10 years before you actually come up with a product and even then you don't know whether it will be a success or not. So it's, it's not very easy, there are not a lot of people who want to invest in healthcare research and whatever funds or whatever money is usually goes to US and uh, these kind of countries. So it's a little tough. So we are overtly dependent on either bootstrapping our own money or on government grants which unfortunately are not enough. Everybody has a right to their opinion. Uh, we can't really, we can only do work and prove. And uh, medical science, unlike a lot of other things, uh, you really have to be black and white. There is no scope of grey. So there are a lot of clinical trials that are going on around the world. Uh, a lot of them have been completed, a lot of them are still going on. The data is being collated, new data is being generated on a daily basis. Um, to say today that whether it's a hoax or it is something good is very, very difficult because till the time we have those uh, tens of thousands of patients who have undergone uh, treatment, followed up for 10 years, understood the efficacy, we can't really, uh, we can't really comment on that, but uh, the future looks good. I mean, whatever initial results are coming in, uh, they are coming in quite good. It's very important for the government to regulate this. Uh, we have to be very, very clear, stem cell therapy is experimental. Right. There is no proof, there is absolutely no basis on which any doctor can stand up and say, I can do stem cell treatments. The patient has to be counseled very well, they have to be uh, they have to they have to understand that this is something that is not even the last resort I mean I wouldn't recommend it to anyone uh, going blindly into stem cell therapies uh, you have to understand the science you have to understand what is on offer and you have to understand what the credentials of the doctor are 
So you, unfortunately, we see a lot of doctors every day who uh, have absolutely no knowledge of uh, of stem cells or regenerative medicine and would just say, you know, I'm willing to treat patients. Uh, this is this is not how it can be done. You have to have research background. You have to have solid credentials. It needs to be regulated. That's for sure. Uh, healthcare has to be regulated. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes it becomes overtly regulated. Now, that's that's something that we have to deal from country to country, and it's there around the world. I mean, we are playing with people's life, so there is no regulation is excess enough. It has to be regulated for sure. Uh, when it comes to clinical trials, there are excellent regulations that are in place, uh, not just for stem cells, for anything. If you want to do a clinical trial, there's a set standard, set way that uh, agencies like ICMR and ECGI have put, put in place. And uh, we, like anybody else, have to follow them. Uh, am I happy with the pace of trials that are going on? No, absolutely not. I think it can be faster. I think it can be more. Uh, India does not have a lot of trials registered for stem cells as of date. There are hardly any. Uh, I think the government can be a little more supportive towards that. Uh, we are working with the government very closely on those lines, but uh, it might take a little more time. India has never really been the innovation hub or really never been the place from where... So we, we are experts in sending doctors. Uh, if you look at the world, uh, half of the innovations that take place are Indian doctors are everywhere in the teams. But somehow we have never created that ecosystem, that atmosphere within the country that we can encourage this kind of research. A lot of uh, research that takes place in India somehow just uh, you know, goes in waste sitting in the research labs, never get to commercial stage. Uh, I don't think government is entirely to blame here. Uh, government can only work as much, government can only provide you as much. At the end of the day it is up to the individual where they can take their research. Uh, but definitely the current government now has taken some bold steps. Uh, the kind of encouragement that we as researchers are starting to get is uh, commendable. Uh, the, the government is announcing funding also in, in various ways. Uh, we are trying to tap into those fundings. So uh, the things seem to be getting together. The ecosystem seems to be changing. Uh, it might take a few more years for that to happen, but uh, definitely the uh, the, the steps are being taken, which is very encouraging. So.